Hey guys, Tyler Jeffcoat with Seller Accountant, and today we're going to talk about journal entries. So I want to walk you through kind of what a journal entry is within your QuickBooks Online system, and then I'm going to kind of help you through what might be your most common journal entry as an Amazon seller, which is taking the 14-day settlement statement from Amazon and turning it into kind of a coherent set of accounting data. So let me get myself out of the way here. If you ever heard me talk about charts of accounts before, I just wanna give a quick kind of refresher. If you're numbering your accounts, your balance sheet is gonna be a list of what you own, which is called assets, what you owe, which is your liabilities and debts, and then whatever's left is your owner's equity, right? It's kind of like my house is worth 100,000, I have a mortgage of 50,000, the equity is the other 50,000, it's the same for your business. Uh, assets include cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and then liabilities might be your credit cards, accounts payable, and debts. So what I want to make the point here, and then I'm going to demonstrate what a journal entry is, is with a double entry accounting system. So, uh, you know, think about uh, almost every country in the world, at U.S. in particular, has a double entry system. If I get plus $100, so somebody gives me $100, something else in my accounting system has to also increase by $100. So if I borrowed $100, then my liabilities or my debts would go up by $100 so that that, uh, so that, that transaction balances. If um, instead of borrowing, I got $100 because I sold something, then my revenue would go up by $100 so that again, it balances. I got cash in my checking account and in like kind, I balanced the transaction by having an increase in my revenue. The opposite would be true if I had to stroke a check to, to pay a bill. You know, my expenses end up getting debited, which is actually an increase of the expense, and my cash goes down. And so here's the point. I don't want to try to get too accounting technical for you, but a journal entry is the simple mechanism, the simplest view of accounting that allows you to debit and credit different accounts manually. My cash increased by 10 bucks because I sold $10 worth of stuff. So uh, on your, just trust me on this, on your P&L, a credit is good news. I got a credit, which means my I'm happier because I had more sales and that's how it counterbalances my debit where I got more cash in my account. The opposite is true down here with another journal entry where I ended up debiting advertising expense for $100 and I had to take that cash from somewhere. I paid it either you know, via credit card or via my cash account. And so the absolute basis for a journal entry is kind of what I'm showing you here, but who cares about that? Let me show you what this looks like in real life. So if you go into your Amazon dashboard, I hope you guys can see this. Let me blow it up just a tad. You can get to your payments dashboard. Lots of useful data here. If you're big and you're using accrual accounting or if you're using a firm like Seller Accountant, we're going to have you probably use a tool called A2X Accounting to help you slice and dice these statements. But let's just say for giggles you wanted to do it manually. The quick and dirty, easiest way to learn how to do this, and I do think it's helpful to learn this as a business owner, is to pick a settlement. So this is the most recent settlement for this particular seller. And um, there looks like they're settling every week. So this is a one-week period where Amazon is giving us this um, kind of picture. The nice thing that Amazon does is all of the smiley face news, in other words, credits, are in blue up here at the top. We had uh, sales, we got shipping income, we got some FBA reimbursements, and when we had our products refunded, Amazon gave us a portion of the uh, of the commission, 15% commission back. That's all the blue stuff here. When we make a journal entry, that's going to be credits. Everything in red or orange down here are the, are the bad news, frowny face parts of this transaction, which are going to include your expenses, your promotional rebates, your coupons you gave, uh, any Amazon fees and any miscellaneous fees. And so let me show you how, let me see if I can make this a little bit more readable, how I would turn this data set into, let me make it a little smaller. I'm going to turn this data set into a simple journal entry. I hope you can see this. Put this little puppy over here. Let's move our QuickBooks Online account. There we go, right here. And I actually went ahead and created this journal entry to make that a little bit easier for me to explain it to you. But here's what you would do. So before I dive into there, you're gonna hit your plus signal here within QuickBooks, and you're gonna find the journal entry. If it's not gigantically enlarged like this one is, you'll be able to find it on the right-hand side. I'm just gonna click on journal entry. It's gonna open up a blank journal entry. Again, to make this test a little bit easier, I went ahead and pre-did it for you. And so what I would recommend is 
Each of the data points along the right-hand side, the kind of blue smiley face stuff up here for Amazon and the red frowny face stuff need to be converted into debits and credits on my journal entry. And so the first one is I had Amazon sales at seller account. That is the 4,100 account because it's green or blue, whatever color this is here on my Amazon chart, that's going to be a credit. And you see how I took this $64,261 and I just put it directly on the credit side of my journal entry. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with my shipping income, with my FBA reimbursements, and with this $413 or $412 in Amazon fees that were credited back to me when someone else did a refund. And then I'm going to come down here and now my debits on the left hand side of this journal entry are going to be comprised of the expense part of the data that I'm getting out of Amazon here. My refunded sales, that is a bad news event for my sales, my promotional rebates and coupons I had to give away, my pick and pack fees, and then my 15% commission to Amazon and any miscellaneous fees. I'm going to throw those in the right um, journals, the right accounts within my accounting system. And then one thing I want to, I want to caution you that'll really trip you up if you don't do this. I, if you notice on this particular seller here, there's a pretty large reserved balance that Amazon is holding back from these guys. And I need to make sure that I'm booking. That's a receivable. Amazon owes us this $55,000. They paid us 37 today, but they still owe us 55,000. And I want to make sure that I capture and keep that on my balance sheet as money that, that Amazon owes me. Um, but in order for me to book the appropriate receivable for this month, I've got to go unbook what I did last month or a week ago when I did my prior settlement. And so if I just go here and go back one settlement into the past, I see that I booked a 52148 uh, Amazon reserve balance last week. So I'm going to undo that one first. I'm pulling that reserve balance out of the mix to zero out what I did last week. And now I've had all the smiley face and frowny face events from this week. And now I'm going to add back in this week. So let me get back to the present or the more recent one. And I'm booking this current updated receivable from Amazon, which is $55,114. And then whatever's left. So the nice thing about this journal entry, now let me just kind of make this a little bit larger so we can see it. The nice thing about a QuickBooks Online journal entry is it won't let you save it unless these two numbers at the bottom actually actually match each other. So if I were to like say delete this, I've just put all the data in I can get out of Amazon. I've created one more line. I'm going to try to capture what actually got deposited on my bank account. It's going to preload to, to, to kind of uh, try to match and balance that journal entry. My check figure to, to see if I did this journal entry correctly is this $37,362 ought to be exactly what was deposited into my checking account. And if we look at the bottom of this Amazon uh, chart here, you can see that that is indeed exactly what Amazon deposited into our account just a couple of days ago. Now I know I'm good. Now I know that when that deposit comes through the bank feed, I'm just going to match it with this journal entry right here. And this journal entry is going to allow me to perfectly capture for this one week or two week period what my sales, refunds, fees, and even reserve balances are for Amazon. Now, the one thing I'm not <laughs> going to show you in this particular video, it's just a little bit more technical, is what if this one week period from instead of being from June 7th to June 15th, what if it was actually across a month? Like some of the data was in May and some of the data was in June. It's a little bit more challenging because now we've got to go get Amazon data and split it, kind of pivot it by month. Again, if that's your situation, we highly recommend A, hiring a service like Seller Accountant that specializes in doing this kind of splitting, or B, getting a tool like A2X Accounting. We love this tool for automatically splitting the Amazon data perfectly by month and perfectly creating these journal entries for you. But if you're not worried about the accrual and you just want to book the Amazon deposit every time it comes in, again, I don't recommend this at scale, but as a new business, you may choose to do this. All you got to do is go to your payments payments tab here, payments dashboard, pull up the settlement in question, and use the data points given to, to create a simple journal entry. Um, I, by the way, I just typed in these descriptions manually. You can kind of call them whatever you want to. Um, and I make sure I date it correctly, make sure I put some kind of an intuitive marker for the journal entry, and then I close and I save it. And then my P&L is going to be correct. And once that deposit comes in, we're going to be in business. So I'm going to end this video with that. Any other questions about this, feel free to shoot us an email, contact us. We'd love to help you here at Seller Account. This is what we do. Um, but just in terms of how to do a journal entry, just remember that you've got to balance it and you want to get that data out of your Seller Central account. Have a great day. Take care.